Hey everyone, Britta Albert here. If this is your first time here, I'm a spiritual transformational life coach. It's my goal for this channel to help you overcome the obstacles that are standing in the way of you living your best and most authentic life. In today's video, we are going to continue on talking about chakras. Did you know that there are actually more than seven chakras? Now, before we dive into that, what is a chakra? The word chakra comes from Sanskrit for the word wheel or circle. It originated somewhere between 1500 and 500 BC, and it is a spinning disc or wheel of energy that runs along the spine. While some say that there can be as many as 114 different chakra points within the human body, what I'm gonna focus on in this series is going to be the dimensional chakra points. So the seventh dimensional chakra points and 36 within the seven dimensions. Now we are multidimensional beings. What does that mean? It means that we reside within multiple dimensions simultaneously. Currently, we are residing between third and fifth dimensions, or as I like to call them, densities. Now I've already gone in depth of chakras one through seven, and one through seven is the third density or third dimensional chakras. So for the remainder of this series, I'm gonna focus on the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensional chakras. But if you haven't checked out my videos of the first through seventh chakras, go ahead and check them out in the playlist here. And just to refresh your mind, the first chakra in the third dimension is the root chakra. Then after that is the sacral or polarity chakra. After that, we have the solar plexus, then the heart, then the throat, the third eye, and the crown. And that is one through seven of 3D. But wait a minute, that's starting at three. What about the second dimension and the first dimension? Well, I'm glad you asked. The third dimension is considered the first lifetimes where we are aware of ourselves, where we have thoughts that says, who am I? Where do I belong in the universe? So the way that consciousness evolves is the first dimension, 1D, is going to be your pure consciousness. This is pure creative consciousness. This is where we all come from. And the first physical form is going to be rock. It's going to be soil. It's going to be earth. It's going to be some sort of matter. That is your first density. So think of it as sleeping. It is consciousness in its purest form. It is the building blocks for everything. It's atoms. It's molecules, it's elements that combine and create all of life. That is the first dimension of the first density. Then you have the second, which is going to start with your single cell organisms and go all the way through plants, insects, bacteria, animals, and end with house pets. So house pets are different than your wild animals because they start to develop love. They start to develop a different kind of loyalty on a different level. They start to develop shame when they get disciplined for things. There are more complex emotions that plague a house pet versus a pet in the wild. And so being a house pet would be the last part of the second density evolution before you enter into the third density human form. So although there are chakras that exist in the first and the second density, they're not what we're really going to touch on here because those are going to activate and balance themselves naturally. There's nothing that you really need to do as far as activating those chakra points or deactivating them or balancing them or them being unbalanced because it has nothing to do with the conscious mind. That just happens naturally for the first and the second. So we really start at the third because the third dimension, the third density, is where we really start to become truly sentient beings, where we're self-aware. So that's why you'll see one through seven in the third density. Now, also, I use the term density and dimension interchangeably. To me, they do mean different things, but as far as explaining how this goes, we'll use them interchangeably as the same thing. So the way that we have it laid out, we will call it 3D for short, instead of density or dimension. 
is you have one through seven, and that is laid out within the human form. 4D is going to be the eighth through the 15th chakras. 5D is going to be the 16th through the 22nd chakras. 6D is the 23rd through 29th chakras. And 7D is the 30th through 36th chakras. Now, when we get to the seventh, there are different belief systems as far as what comes next. There are belief systems that exist that say that there are 12 dimensions, that there are 14 dimensions, that there's 18 dimensions, that there's so on and so forth, infinity dimensions. And they're not wrong, but it is just depending on how you label it. So the way that I'm speaking is more coming from the theory and the, and the teachings behind the law of one where consciousness evolution goes from, they call it an octave. And you start at 1D, you graduate into 2D, then you graduate into 3D. 4D is the bridge between 3D and 5D, which is why right now we're experiencing 3, 4, and 5 simultaneously. Then you graduate into 6th density or 6D, then you graduate into 7th. And then instead of graduating into 8th, you go into another octave. So think of it as at the end of it, you're graduating from seven and you go into one again, but it might be 1.1. And then at the end of that octave, you graduate into 1.2 and it's another octave and another octave. So it depends on how you label them. It can go on for infinity. You can name it whatever you want to name it. For me, it's just an ease of use and it makes everything make a bit more sense when you break it down in sections of seven. So that's the way that I will be approaching this is breaking it down in sections of seven, the seven different densities or dimensions, but understand that all of the teachings, they're correct. It depends on what lens or perspective that you're looking at it through. So when all of these chakra points from 1D to 7D, when they're in full balance, what does that bring us? What's the point of it? Well, when we are in balance and we are in alignment, especially through the different dimensions or densities, then that makes us so much more productive when it comes to creating, when it comes to manifestation. When you want something and you're not in resistance, it allows it to flow to you so much faster. It allows you to create it instantaneously. Now, it may not look instantaneous through all of the different densities or dimensions, but ultimately you are creating it instantaneously because you are in alignment. When you're out of alignment, it means that there's resistance somewhere. There's something that's happening. So usually it's gonna be in the lower 3D, 4D, 5D, somewhere in there, maybe even 6D. And we, as we exit the idea of duality and we enter into the oneness, that resistance becomes less and less and less. And think about it again as when you're in the fourth density, say for example, so right now we're experiencing the third density. We were, we were born in 3D. And then now we have the earth that is residing in 5D. So now the earth can sustain a 5D being, but we're still 3D beings on a 5D planet. So we cannot perceive all of the things that the earth is capable of. We're starting to learn that and our eyes are starting to open because we're on the bridge of the fourth density or fourth dimension. So with all of that, duality still exists. And when you enter into the fifth density or dimension, it's not gonna be just this instantaneous all-knowing. It is an event, but it's also a progression. And again, it depends on the lens you're looking at it from as to how you would judge it or perceive it. But think of it as you enter it in, there's different octaves there as well. So you have 5.1 and you grow a little bit, you have 5.2 and you grow a little bit and you have 5.3. So become more aware as you go. And the more aware that you become, the more in alignment things just happen naturally. So being off balance or being out of alignment is not necessarily something that you need to worry about so much as being present and allowing what is to be and 
following your intuition and your instinct on what you should do next because we are all different. We all have, all have different parts to play. What's important to you is not necessarily important to me. What's important to me is not necessarily important to you. But if I don't do my part, then there's a lack. If you don't do your part, then there's a lack. Do you see what I'm saying? So the reason that it's so beneficial to be in balance and in alignment is just so that we are able to be so much more effective and so much more productive However, it's not the end all be all and it doesn't mean that we're doing something wrong or that we're a bad person. We're just experiencing something different in this duality reality that we're currently in, in this consciousness. So how can you tell if something is off balance, if one of the chakras are off balance? Well, you're gonna feel off. You might get sick. You might get sick again. You might start to make some silly mistakes that you would have never made before. And then it shifts dramatically and everything seems to be falling apart in your life. Those are five signs that may show you that you have some resistance, some unbalance, some you're out of alignment somewhere. Again, this doesn't mean that what you're experiencing is wrong because sometimes we must be out of alignment to experience something authentically. If you wanted to experience peace, then you may have come here to experience fear because how can you know peace if you never knew fear? So in order to believe in the fear, you had to become unaligned or unbalanced so that you could buy into the belief of the experience that you're currently having, otherwise it's inauthentic. So again, the biggest thing is just to not be in resistance. Allow whatever it is to come. If you're in a place of fear, can you be okay to be experiencing that fear? Understand that this will pass. This will not be your forever moment. That is the best way that you can bring yourself back into alignment, the fastest possible way, naturally the way that it was intended to be. Trust your body, trust your higher self. You know what you're doing, even if you're not consciously aware of it. The only suffering that's gonna come is from your resistance to what's currently happening in your now moment. But believe me, it will pass. You will get through it. You will realign, you will rebalance. And the more that you can go through this and you can see it for what it is, this is called shadow work, then the less these moments will come, the more peace you'll have, the more confidence you'll have, the more power you'll have, and the more effective ultimately you will be in manifesting. So I hope that you guys are excited for what is to come on this series as I expand on the chakra points. Stay tuned for the next video of this series, which is going to touch on the fourth density or dimension, the 4D eighth chakra point. You guys have an awesome day and I will see you next time.